Thank you for joining today to this session that we're going to start in just a moment. This session is kind of the, the follow up of, of a few conversations I had both publicly and privately with Takahiro Yagi of Kaikado. And it's called Slow Prosperity, Empathy and Business. And Taka is the sixth generation head of Kaikado, uh, which started making tikaris, chazutsu, in Kyoto in 1875, shortly after Japan reopened its borders to the world. And in March of this year, Taka published his book, Kyokan to Akinai, or Empathy in Business, where he writes about the history of Kaikado and how the company achieved long, slow prosperity by creating good things and setting an upper limit to production without chasing sales. Um, Taka shares a bit of the challenges they had throughout their history um, and what it's um, planned for the future of, of the company. Now, the book is currently only available in Japanese, so this is going to be the first time that Taka is speaking about it in English, which is a precious opportunity. But now, let me welcome Takahiro Yagi of Kaikado. Welcome, Taka. Hello. Hello, John. How are you? Hi, Taka. I'm, I'm very good. Um, I'm in London. Um, a few months ago, I was there sitting next to you at the Kaikado Cafe in Kyoto. So how are things on, on a Friday evening in, in Kyoto? It's, it's, you know, it's just after the uh, cherry blossom season was over. Mm -hmm. And about still, you know, a lot of people start coming from report, uh, outside Japan. And then, you know, in Kyoto, it's a lot of lots of people mm. uh, uh, now. Yeah. And uh, now we are uh, having a lot of fun in here in Kyoto. Mm. Does it feel like it's back to pre-pandemic times? Mm. I, I feel like, you know, I, I feel so, but a little bit different from that. And then people start enjoying a little bit slower hmm. uh, to with to read like that. Yes. Interesting. Um, yes, it's when when I was there in November last year, uh, Kyoto f felt still quite empty, which was surprising. My previous time there four years before, it was very, very, very full, um, which was kind of refreshing. But of course, uh, you know, tourism is also an important part of, of Kyoto. So I guess the challenge is now finding that new balance um, that is both sustainable, but, you know, doesn't close off, you know, all the richness that Kyoto has to share to the rest of the world. Yes, and, uh, because uh, the, lots of people uh, start thinking about what is uh, our future mm. and what we would like to do for our future. Right. Mm. Yes. So, uh, as, as I mentioned in the intro, you know, um, you published your book this year, in March of this year. Uh, yes. I think this is your first book, right? Is it the first book you've written? Yes. And this well, is my congratulations. first book. Uh, hmm? Congratulations. It's always a, a, you know, a challenge to write a book <laughs> and, and you've done it. So that's a great thing. Um, it, it, it takes about two years to finish the book. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, you always seem to me a very busy person because, of course, you're the head of Kaikado. Uh, then you have the, the, the cafes that have been a growing part of the business, but you also have your passion in racing. Um, so how did you manage to write a book? Was it because of the pandemic that you were traveling less or or how did you make time for it? Mm, yeah, actually, before the uh, the COVID time, at, uh, I already start feeling like, you know, something scaring to, to make the big business. Mm. It's not su suitable for the uh, crafts. Mm. Um, not all, it's you know, if in a crafts people wants to make it a double scale, we need a double people, yeah, to make so you know, a lot of lots of people you know, looking at another you know, money and uh, a scaling before the pandemic, pandemic time. And uh, I feel you know, little, I feel a little strange about it, and it's not suitable for everyone, yeah. I feel that's why you know I really want to write about the book because you know I I know you know scaring and money is important for living, but you know no I think it is not only for the older people. Hmm. Yeah, like, well, I mean I think you know in in the last two decades with the rise of 
the technology industry as a general industry for everybody and and uh, having such an important effect in our lives, especially consumer technology. I think that a lot of business practices that work in that space or that are used in that space, uh, we could argue then if they work or not, have been adopted as, as if that were the norm, because of course we've seen many of these companies generating a lot of uh, financial returns and, and, uh, and often they're obsessed with growth at all costs and scale and, and they grow you know, and generate lots of money. But then now we are also seeing the consequences of that. And often, you know, what works on, on a digital space might not work or is not healthy for a, an atom space. And, and, and we are still made of atoms, right? We are physical. So I think that um, there is a need for a rebalance of what is good business, what is um, sustainable. I, I often uh, quote uh, that saying that is written in, in, in Ryo Anji in the Tetsubin, you know, uh, what is enough mm -hmm. or to know what is enough, uh, what is contentment. Um, so I think that your book comes at a very timely moment, not just for the crafts world, but for many of us looking for an alternative model. And, and I think speaking with many of the people that were interested in this session, that they were attracted by the title, Slow Prosperity, Empathy and Business. So um, tell us a bit about the, the book and, and what you're trying to address with, with the book. Uh, the, uh, the first, uh, the, I have uh, one question, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I try to use, uh, I try to not to use business for the akinai. Mm. Uh, in Japanese, in a business in written in katakana, mm. and uh, akinai is a slightly different meaning, like mm. a more small business mean, like a, not not like a, if we use a world like a business it's kind of either like a scaling in a big one so do you have any suitable word for the in english like the akinai well it's tricky um and 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 even empathy and stuff so when i was looking at the title in japanese i was trying what would be the most simple way to translate it um and you know for example in in, in english at least in, in in britain we use smes which is small and medium M, um, enterprises or companies um, mm -hmm. But these days, you could be a tech company and be small, mm -hmm. you know, by those old standards, which is either the number of employees. And mm -hmm. so I think it's very difficult. Sometimes we do use small business or small businesses, you know, whenever we're talking mm -hmm. economics, uh, measurements that uh, measures that the government does to protect small businesses. But it's tricky because how do you define small, right? Is it in size? Mm -hmm. Is it an output? Is it in money generated? And and you know, uh, government might use different of these scales, but I think it's very tricky. Um, also because business, uh, if, if we go to the origin of, of, of the word, was about interacting, right? Uh, professionally and, and an exchange of value somehow. It's just that uh, probably in, in, in the last 40 or 50 years, we took business to be associated with the big corporations or that very anonymous um, entities. Well, business used to be, you know, um, the word bank, for example, comes from Italian, either Venice or Florence, of the of the of the benches where people would sit, right, banco or bancone, mm -hmm. and they would do business there. You would sit down and you would trade and stuff. This was before the idea of business yeah. as a company. Yeah, as you so talk about, like, a, you know, I think be, in the beginning there is a human and a human, yeah, and they pass something to each other. But sometimes we need a common languages for each other. Yeah. I think that is the money. Yes. Now it's, you know, people always, you know, I think it is opposite side, like uh, money comes first. Yeah. But, uh, you know, for us, you know, what we want to uh, talk about in this book is, you know, money shouldn't be the first mm, for some reason, because we, we are the human and human and always connected by the inner heart. So that's why I use a lot of word in this book, like a family. Mm. Mm, in in uh, uh, the family is kind of the sharing the uh, uh, mm, feel, sharing the atmosphere feeling like a, we call it a lashisa in Japanese, mm. which is like atmosphere or character, and uh, with the with the, with from the feeling, not by words. Mm. That is kind of we already have in a family, so. Mm, something like you know, uh, exchange of the feeling yeah. is first. I think important for the, as a first step, and then 
then we can pass the uh, physical things like uh, clothes is uh, for us, you know, there's a tea container mm. and to pass each other. Then we need something to trade. Then money comes later, I think. But uh, in this about, you know, four decades or five decades, uh, people always think money comes first. Yeah. So I think, you know, I feel like a little strange feeling at the point. We always, in the Jan, I met Jan, I think it's about 10 years ago, something like that. Yes, at Salon in Milan, yeah. Yeah. And uh, from that point, we exchange our, you know, feeling in, in a distance, like, uh, you know, UK and Japan and for a long time. That's why we can uh, communicate like this in today. So I think that feeling is much important yeah. Than uh, the money things, I, I feel. That's why I try to write about this book. And uh, for especially for like a class people uh, surrounded by myself, the people, uh, those kind of people are a little bit struggling about the points. Yeah. Like uh, always people talk about the money and the money and our scaling. But for the class people, as I talked before, to make the big scale, we need a, a uh, to make the double scale. We need a double people to make. Yeah. So I think the profit doesn't become you know much higher and higher. No, yeah, no, you cannot profit. scale. You know, uh, like like a, a, a company that's doing immaterial things that it can be replicated mm -hmm. very easily. But I think mm -hmm. there's another thing, right? Um, uh, you know, the modern way of doing business, and and of course. Japan also changed a lot in the times that Kaikado was opening, right? Mm -hmm. With the major mm -hmm. restoration and and seeing different ways of doing business. But you know, there's a maxim in the in the business world or the management world, which is what cannot be measured cannot be managed. And uh, for for many years, that was you know the main point of reference of trying to be more efficient, more productive. And of course, money can be managed. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, can be measured. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have focused on that. But feeling, and, and feeling could be in, in both in business and family, is, is less difficult to quantify. So I, I sometimes wonder if, is it because it's easier to count you know, money that we lost um, the, the, the connection with, with feeling? Um, mm. or, or is it that because we see the output, you know, uh, what money allows you to do, that we forgot to see what is enough or what is the point or what makes us, makes us happy? Um, mm -hmm. Um, and I think that has been an issue for for many companies. You know, not every company has to be massive. Not every company needs to be global. Not every company needs to satisfy all the customers of the world. You know, we we probably um, got a bit derailed in thinking that's the case. Mm -hmm. but then there's things that we started to sacrifice in so many industries, like quality or durability or impact. Right. Mm -hmm. So if what you're doing. Uh, is having a negative impact in 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 systems outside of yours could be nature could be other populations and stuff you know how do we measure that um, mm -hmm. or how do we connect both things? I think like you know impact so like very shallow things. Mm -hmm. It's I think it's just for the uh, very uh, 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 mm -hmm. short period yes. for the short period of the time of the business and. Uh, I, you know, for for us, I I we always you know think about in a, in a long this long term, mm. like uh in my f you know actually in my grandfather's time, just after World War Two, a lot of machine made comes to machine made a tea container comes from a foreign country, and the people are very uh hurry attempt to the machine made tea container, machine made the good ones, handmade is old fashioned. Mm. But my grandfather, if he think about, you know, uh, profit, he go into the machine made Kaikado tea container, mm. but he, he did, didn't do that. That's why we can exist right now. If he go into the machine made uh, tea container business, maybe the machine made things go to the foreign country with a less expensive, you know, uh, the high, uh, the money to make. Yeah. Then, you know, 
we cannot exist in Japan anymore. I think you know, my grandfather think about future and also he think about the uh, uniqueness of the handmade. And also I think he has a proud of making it by hand in a good, in a good quality. That's why he never get into the, uh, the machine made tea container. Yeah. That's why we can exist right now. So we always think about the future and also think about you know, our past. Like uh, I always feel like feel about my grandfather and my father in my behind. And also in the same time, I think about my children and, and also the grandchildren in the same time. What then I try to do, I try to think about what should what should we do right now? But do you think that's because you were born into um, a, a, a craftsmanship family, mm -hmm. um, it, it, or is it, or is it something else? Because, for example, um, uh, I remember you sharing that initially your father didn't want you to join the company because he thought it had no future, right? Mm -hmm. And and um, one of your first jobs as a, as a very young person was outside of the company, and then you decided to come back. And there's a very interesting anecdote you tell tell about. Uh, I think it was an American woman that came and picked up one of your tea caddies and say, why would you want this, right? And that changed your, your vision of it. Yes, um, yes. But is, do you think, uh, uh, when you say we, are you talking about we as the Kaikado tradition? Are you talking about mm -hmm. a, a craftsman, shokunin? What, what do you think makes you think long-term? Uh, no. Mm, for Let me, me simplify you know, the question. So is it something you teach? Um, is it something that you learned because you were part of a family that was thinking long term? Or do you think it's it's something else that's paying attention to the past and to the future? I think, you know, it's uh, easy for me to think about our past. Because a tea caddy is started from 150 years ago, and we make exactly the same one. So for me, it's more easy to think about 100 years ago with tea container. But I think, you know, this situation, it's not only for myself. I think it's you know, kind of, uh, you know, generation things is also, you know, uh, happen to, you know, happen to you and, uh, and uh, happen to everybody because we are the, uh, Nandai Mecca of the uh, human. Mm. Uh, so, you know, thinking about the original of the human, we are the maybe the 1000 generation of the human. Yeah. So, no, not only for the, uh, the for the Kaikado, it's a, we are the sixth generation as a Kaikado. So, more, more it's visible to think about our first generation and the sixth. Second generation, third generation, fourth generation, five generation, and sixth generation, more easy to you know think about. But for everyone in the world, it's kind of the one part of the generation. Yeah. So, so no, that's why uh, people always think about themselves. That's why people always forget about our past. Mm. But we, all of us, we have the past and the several generations. At that point, if we think about that point, you know, we can think about our future in a long distance more. It's think, only think about myself, you know, it's kind of be a very short time. And I think it's a matter of responsibility. One of the challenges we have these days uh, when we think about the environment and, and, and the challenges with um, sustainability is that many years ago, you went back to the Industrial Revolution or the Middle Ages, we didn't understand those consequences, right? So we were doing, um, you know, things like we, or like probably was thought it was the best, but now we know the effects of many of these things, of our behaviors and stuff. So now we have the information to make a decision and we could decide, you know what, everything is gonna disappear. So let's use it now and consume it and enjoy it. Or let's think of what we're leaving for, for, mm -hmm. for, for those that come after us. And the younger you are, the more you are gonna live into the future. So I think um, now there's a sense of responsibility that we have. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when in your book, in one of the chapters, you talk about how as, as craftspeople, you know, there's an important thing, which is the passing on of the knowledge, but also the decision of what to protect and pass on and what to change because times change and you don't need to work like in 1875 because some things you did them there because that was the only way of doing them. 
So I wonder how how do you evaluate you know um, what from the past to protect and pass on and and what to change? And uh, I think you know before I start project about go on, the goal is about six craft people join together and think about our future of the crafts. And uh, before we start before we start the project, I think about what is our you know essence. I didn't think about it. What is our strong point of the Kaikado? Uh, it's very, you know, you no, know, I, I never think about the point. But when we met each other, the there is very, you know, crafts. So it's very chikai kanke, cross. Mm. Yes, mm. Uh, cross pollination or interactive and yeah. with each yeah. other. Yes, codependent in a way. So that's why, you know, they can be a kind of with a mirror for each other. So, uh, you know, for the first time, uh, we quarrel each other because when we have the interview from the magazine, I we try, you know I try to be the you know center of the interview mm. without the other people. Then, but everyone was like that, and we quarrel each other. Mm. But while we are quarrel each other, we start thinking about. What is their strong point, and what is my strong point? Yeah, and then it become a bit visible for me what is a strong point for myself. I think that is the point I shouldn't have to change. Like for Kaikado, it's a tea container, and uh, uh, the tea container itself is not a strong point of the Kaikado. I think. And uh, I, I think, you know, uh, it, that is the feeling when you open the tea container. If you have a good feeling and uh, still when you have the tea, the tea is a good taste. That means this container has a, 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 a kino, kino ga ii no de. No, just um, very good function. Yeah. Yes, and that's why you know uh, we can keep the tea in a fresh. Mm. So uh, no, I think that point is a I think is a core value for the tea container and a core value for Kaikado. Mm. And uh, that point, if we do not change the point, we can do anything. I feel that I understand the point. So to think about you know what should I change, what shouldn't change. First, we needed someone very close to us to co compare with. It can be something like, can be the mirror of myself. And then I can find out what is a strong point. Then the strong point, you shouldn't change. You shouldn't re remain. And other things you can change and you can adjust to the era right now. Something like this, you know, uh, if you change too much, something will pull back. Especially for crafts people, we have lots of history and we have a very strong uh, things in our behind. That's the things always pull us back to the good point. So all we have to do is jump as much as, as far as we can then something pull back mm. to the good point. Interesting. Mm. So everyone has something, you know, in a behind. But, you know, people always uh, thinking about the new and uh, uh, very instant things too much. So people forget about what is the core value always. But if we are very sensitive to feel about what is my core, something mm. you can feel if you go strange way, something will pull back. Interesting. So I think first we should have to you know, feel what is the core value for myself. Yeah, but it's interesting. Uh, someone uh, actually Tomo Yoshisawa on 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 the chat was uh, translating, you know, the the economy of life or or the ecosystem. Uh, that mm -hmm. is there and and i think tea is a great example because when when i first met you and some of the other 
members of the go on group um it's, it's it's very interesting to see the products together because for example mm -hmm. i i do keep tea in in my ah, yes. caddies uh but then i use the strainers done by kanami tsuji uh, i use the the tea balls uh done yes like that one mm -hmm. um you know there might be then the tea balls made by asahiyaki like that one uh then there might be the the, the wooden tools or containers made by Nakagawa, Mokuge, um, and I think that everything that we bring into this world is, is, is not, doesn't happen in isolation, right? And understanding also what is your contribution to that ecosystem is important because mm -hmm. even ourselves, we cannot live our, si our lives alone. You know, even if you focus on your own things, you require of everything that's around you to, to live, to thrive. What you do has an impact on others and it can be good and it can be bad. And, and I think that's something that often we forget in the in the world in the business world where it's all about you know benefit for ourselves as quickly as possible without realizing that that benefit has to uh, is connected to other things and has consequences and if you people throw away immediately i think people doesn't feel like that so as you as you do you know uh people continue using it not to throw away immediately then people can start feeling what is a good point for the you know things of the, like a crafts. So uh, for the something from now on, from the craft side, if people can not dispose, continue using, I think the one of the solution for the eco environments. Yeah. So. And also, if you continue using the things, you can find out uh, uh, monogara. Mm. Monogara is a kind of the character of the thing. Yes. Yeah, before we, yeah, before we yeah. started uh, the, the public session, I was showing you some, I think this is the first one I bought uh, about 10 years ago. And you can see all these marks and stuff. And, and part of it is, is because of use. Right, and and if I compare, this is not a fair comparison, but if I compare a new one with uh, an older one and stuff, you start to see it develop a bit like our own personality, right? That it changes and it evolves, which is a good thing. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's um, um, uh, we often say that our, the wisdom of the present is is based on the on the on our failures or mistakes of the past, but you need that period of 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 growth and evolution and. Why shouldn't our products follow us in, in that same sense? Um, one of the things you, you address in the book is uh, society. And, and you say that even if society changes, there are things about people that don't change. Um, and I think that could also be true for the products, right? Mm -hmm. So um, can, can, can you talk about the, the society, the change and not change that you see as, as Kaikad and how you deal with that? Uh, I think, you know, for, I have a feeling like uh, Kaikado is a kind of the straight line of the tea containers for something like a, we are in two years, it's going to be the 150 years anniversary for Kaikado. So I have a feeling like a 150 carries straight line mm. in our history. But to keep this line, in our previous generation of my and also myself, we always small jumps on the tea container. This small jump, something like in this area, it's like a speaker I made with a Panasonic, like a, a coffee container, like spaghetti container, something like small jumps makes the, uh, this uh, tea container line longer, each one by one. So, and uh, so these small jumps is something like adjusting for this era. But I always think about to make this jump, I always look at a T container straight line. So this kind of, uh, for Kaikado, it, it is something like this one. And mm -hmm. in a different class people, like Nakagawa-san, is a different story. He tried to make different kinds of the products. Everything is new, but 
to he always think about to make the things new he always think about what is the uh, techniques of the uh, wood basket mm. and then he tried to make the new and the new and the new and the, but all the new things connected the uh, uh, wood basket mm. so something like this we try to adjust and uh, uh, try to mix our uh, our future yes for example you know the, this is a uh, one for coffee and um this wouldn't have existed 150 years ago because i don't think that there was much consumption of coffee in in japan and while this might seem very similar to the tea one uh, you were talking before about the the small jumps right um mm -hmm. the thing that people are going to be consuming some sort of beverage and stuff that's going to stay and it could be uh, well look at tea right so um uh, tea started as a medicine in the beginning it was mostly powder tea as things like matcha then it moved into steep tea uh, and and the containers change with that but what is constant is that the human behavior of consuming some sort of hot beverage uh, you know with caffeine or not with caffeine and stuff is a constant and there's always going to be need for something like that uh, so even if the fashion of what is the the current drink changes um there's a human need, which is, you know, the storing products or keeping them fresh or sharing them that that is maintained. And often a lot of the products we see, I mean, starting with our smartphones, it almost seems that they're part of a cycle to be replaced as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not made to be repaired, which is a conscious decision. Um, uh, they're not made to, to age beautifully, uh, which is also a conscious decision. Um, so, so it's it's interesting to see a company keeping keeping in mind uh, that there's a, um, a social evolution and changes, but also human behaviors which haven't changed for the last ten thousand years or so, and and to keep that balance because the products we 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 create um, are an extension of ourselves, are an extension of our society, are an extension of our body, um, and often um, they follow very different rules, but they shouldn't. You know, the, the same way that we should appreciate how our body changes and ages and evolves or matures or builds a personality that could also be transmitted to, to the products. And uh, so, and uh, I want to share one thing about, you know, how to uh, continue, you know, our things that like, uh, in Kyoto, uh, we start we start the exhibition about one month ago. And it, it is like in the Kyoto Kyocera Museum. And we showed uh, uh, about 100 years future in Kyoto with the six class member together. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, uh, we create workshop in the exhibition. That workshop is for like a fixing or adjusting. It's kind of a rejuvenate the things so if we only throw away, uh, we cannot continue using it. So we imagine 100 years future now, Kyoto city can be the craft city. People who live in the Kyoto city is all craft people. Not only for the making the things, people live in the city, people use the thing, like cups and uh, in the basket, everything. Also. Those kind of people, if they have the craft minded, they can continue using it. But to continue using it, we need some place to fix, to use again. So that's why we show the place in the exhibition. And uh, now, if we continue using it, if uh, the price, shouldn't be this expensive. So you can use 10 times more, like a less expensive card, you can use only one year if, for example, like if you can use this tea container 10 years, so this can be 10 years times higher than the less expensive caddy. Yeah. So, and then we can make smaller amount of the tea container. So that's also help to keep the uh, environment. 
as well. So not throw away and keep using it. It's, I think it's uh, uh, one of the solution. And also, if we talk about uh, um, functionality, functions of the things like uh, uh, TV or like a uh, laundry machine, you know, a lot of people say this laundry machine can be much whiter than the previous one. But if we talk about too much at this point, all we can do is uh, uh, to make the functional higher or to make it less expensive, only to this way. So it's can, um, it's very, uh, we get tired about to make new, to make new, to make new. But, you know, if we forget about you know, too much functionality, and if we, ta, ware, ta, we tada taru shiru, also yes, in the enough. thing, yeah. then we do not have to talk about the point. And uh, uh, I think, you know, hito wa tada tsukarete iku, mm. get tired about the point. Yes, which mm. is the fascination with, with novelty, right? So, um, I think, you know, in, in, in Europe of the last few years, the, the right to repair movement has been gaining strength because it takes both parties. I mean, on one side, you, the maker, have to make something that can last. But then on the other side, those that want that object need to want to use it for long times or pass it on or understand the cycle of repair where some things could be repaired and keep their function. Other things could be uh, made e easier to disassemble and repurpose, upcycle. Um, but it's 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 a change that has to happen on both sides, right? Both the maker and the the, the users, the consumers. I mean, now there's a big push for slow fashion um, and not wanting to change things every other week. Um, and that's a matter of perception. But as and you also, said, I think that hmm. iPhone is already good, you know, enough function. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, once upon a time, I remember uh, with the early computers of the early smartphones, the jumps were very, very big. So you wanted mm -hmm. a new model because, you know, it, it allowed you to do things that were quite radical. But now we're at a point and we see this in the, in the, in the, in the camera business, um, you know, the film and, and photo camera business. Now nobody cares about megapixels anymore because it's good enough. Unless you're going to wrap the whole world in one big print, you know, there's, there's no point of, of that evolution. And um, I think, again, understanding what is enough, what is the function, um, uh, and, 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 and then focus on the value that it has or how it could live longer and stuff becomes more important. I would definitely vote with my money for a product that I think is more sustainable if it satisfies my needs already, because I don't need uh, a better camera. You know, it's actually, I, I am the limit taking bad photos, not the phone. Um, but it's interesting because unless we change our, our uh, understanding of it as a consumer and our business model, things won't change, right? The maker is just one part in the, in the ecosystem, but you need the whole change to understand and appreciate and be involved with it. Um, there, was, there was a question that came in a moment uh, ago from um, Katya Klein, and it says, um, I love your approach to building, cultivating, and continuing your family business, and I have huge respect for your endurance and sticking to your business ethics. But she asks, have you ever been tempted by the allure of some opportunity that came that promised something? And it made me think last year, uh, there was a beautiful article on the New York Times dedicated to Kaikado. I have it here. Uh, it says, tea caddies that last for a generation. And I think I, I joked with you when I saw you saying, oh, if now everybody buys Kaikado, I won't be able to buy them anymore because, of course, um, uh, there's a limited output. Were you ever tempted to do something uh, for the immediate that felt, oh, this is too good to be true. And if you didn't do it, why? What what stopped you of, of going that direction? Uh, so, I mean, you could be making uh, a bit of what, what your grandfather had to decide. I mean, uh, the company now is is famous enough and and you know is, is seeked by by a big in number of people that you could decide to go you know very cheap scale it and and I think you answered before why you wouldn't do that 
mm-hmm. uh, or someone may say, oh, I want to buy your business, you know, because now you have a brand and, and I could start making, I don't know, other products have nothing to do with Kaikada, but they would do okay, I think. So mm-hmm. what, um, was there any time that you had that kind of offer uh, for big, I don't know, either big money or big success and stuff that you said, no, this is not what I, what I want to do? And the thing, I was in London, uh, they, I always show the things in the Posca Tees. Yes. And uh, several years ago, I was there and I tried to show the new one in each year. But Tim told me, Taka, you have to remain something for next generation. Mm. So if I do too much in this era, maybe next generation cannot do anything more. So something like this, you know, uh, so, um, if, I, if we earn too much money in this you know, business, maybe next generation yeah. cannot have any uh, profit in this. So, um, and also, you know, it shouldn't be uh, 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 sorry, in Japanese and uh, this era, yeah. I know. It's obsessed mm. with the size and, 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 and the crazy growth. Mm-hmm. Mm. <clears throat> so that's, uh, you know, that's thinking about future. You know, like a stable, small line can make the uh, longer, I think. And it's more valuable. Uh, if you think about fish, right? If we eat all the fish now because we want to mm-hmm. have uh, and enjoy it now, nobody else will ever have fish in mm-hmm. the future. So it's also an act of responsibility. Um, but what you mentioned earlier, so you mentioned Tim, Timothy Le Fay, he, he runs the beautiful postcard tees here in London. Um, you know, I, I find it's, it's connecting with the 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 products and the objects and the intentions, which is very important because for example, one characteristic of Kaikado is that each generation brought one change or improvement, right? Mm-hmm. Some of them were materials when, when uh, Japan reopened to the world and you got the tin from, from the UK. Uh, others were um, novel shapes or uses or techniques when you had the double walled you know, to preserve. Um, your contribution, at least how, how you explained it is that you were the one that looked at the rest of the world and making those connections, right? And, and crossing borders and, and spreading the philosophy. So you, you have had an impact in, 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 in the company and you have created collaborations that wouldn't happen 100 or 150 years ago. I think it's very beautiful to hear you speak about the future generations that you have to contribute what you think is valuable now, but also leave space for them to, to add into, into the tradition. Otherwise, you know, if you just focus on money, you know, you could sell the company today, have a very uh, uh, rich life of sorts and stuff, but then that would be the end of the company. But still, I have the feeling like uh, all, all what I do is like I introduce to the world and then pray with my habit like a car. Mm. This is all what I do, I think, right now. Mm. Because, you know, my grandfather innovated copper container, copper tea caddy. Mm. And also that's copper tea caddy still we are making right now and that help us to make the, you know, uh, caddy right now. Mm. Before that, we only make the uh, tin caddy. My grandfather innovated the copper caddy that's why we can continue right now i think that kind of things i need to innovate by myself for the future mm. Mm. so like uh, something like my next next generation uh, appreciate me something like that kind of thing that i should have to make but now i didn't well but i just this, if you think about this, um, sharing, uh, it's, it's um, you know, it's a, it's a common saying that many, you know, families with traditions of they're very secretive, they keep their formulas of things for themselves. 
So I think we are in a point of time as a society and stuff where spreading this is very important because mm -hmm. uh, as I said at the start, many organizations are struggling with very similar things. They're not into crafts. They might be into products or services of different kinds. But I think that understanding how you can be successful, you could uh, bring value to the world, but also have longevity, have um, a non-extractive mindset where you take everything and, and nobody else has is very important. So I think since I've known you for the last decade and stuff that that is a big part of the contribution you're bringing because as you, your father would have um, you know, preferred you not to work in the company and that could have been the end of Kaikado. So I think that that is together with the collaboration you've done with other companies and, and products and stuff, I think that is a big part of the value that you're bringing to, to the tradition, to the Kaikado you know, history. And, and also now in this book, I talk about the family and uh, if we, uh, can make the family in whole the world. And that's, you know, that's, you know, if you think about family, I don't have to take all the profits for myself. You know, we can share with all the family in the world. Hmm. So, you know, if you, I think whole the human in this earth, in this era is a family, we can share, hmm. you know, え、全世界の人がなんか家族みたいに感じることができると、この利益を自分で一人占めしなくていい。あ、ちょっと難しいね。そう、it's uh, <笑><笑> it's, it's a difficult you know. I I always feel like you know, Postcard's team is kind of my family in London. Yeah. Yeah. And also something some at the uh, Inform Interiors in Vancouver is kind of my family in Vancouver yeah. in uh, if I think about those people, I shouldn't have to uh, get all the profits for my for me. You know, we can share the profits in the whole world. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, today Tim at Post Cortez, he um, he was hosting this session uh, for people to go and watch from there and and, and have tea from there, uh, which is um, you know talking of this uh, spirit of sharing and spreading and, and and connecting is I think a very very important thing, uh, but but of course, part of the success of Kaikado is also the the customers, right? Because you make something, and and um, for it to be successful, mm -hmm. someone has to want it. And in the book, you you mention how your customers have turned into supporters, and have been fostering these relationships that you were mentioning about family, that are built that's more than just money. So, how has been the relationship with? With customers, with the people that now you know, this you mentioned Tim in London and, and Vancouver and all these, how has been that process? Because until you know a, a generation or two ago, uh, uh, Kaikado was only Japan bound, right? And and now you have this global family and supporters that uh, are are uh, crazy in a good sense about the products that you bring to the world. Like something like you know. In Japanese, like a fan and oshi is a different. Hmm. The fan is just to see their uh, like a musician from the distance. Oshi is just they always stand next to the musician and raise up to the next level with the musician. The fan is kind of see you know watch from the distance. That's a difference. So like I think the customer is kind of same as a fan. People always. Uh, watch from the distance but something like a family feeling like a customer can be the uh can stand next to us and uh, raise up us to the next level mm. together so i think that mm, that point is different from the customer and the, you know and is this why you started creating the, the Kaikado Cafe and spaces for people to come and enjoy the brand? Because, of course, you could buy these things online and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's very detached, right? You just pick something and you get it, and but um, you almost don't experience it until it arrives. And it might be or not what you were expecting. But when you opened the cafe, what was it, six years ago? Uh, yeah, and now you are actually in the cafe. Now it's closed yeah, because yeah. it's uh, close to 9 p.m. In, in, in Kyoto. 
So how was that opening a space, which was not what Kaikado did, right? Kaikado made a product, didn't create the spaces for, for the gathering. Was that to, to change this relation between the fan and, and, the, and the Oshi or, or the customer in a way? Like we, I think, you know, this cafe help us to make a lot of Oshi features like a family feeling customer. And uh, because uh, in here, people can feel the experience. People can have experience about the crafts. Mm. You know, in Japan, especially for younger people, if I talk about traditional handicrafts, they always step away. But if it is like a cafe, people come into the cafe and uh, they can have naturally have the experience about the craft. They can use the uh, uh, six gener 16 generation made uh, cups, cups made by the 16th generation more easily, and also our tea container and everything in this cafe naturally. Then I think, you know, to drink this kind of cup, we can have a good feeling when you drink it. That's help us to create the experience of the craft. Mm. That's, I think, that's experience help the people to become uh, like a family-minded customer. So that's why this cafe help us a lot. If it is like uh, only the Kaikado and the Kaikado shop, we are only the tea container company. But now with this cafe and with this experience, Kaikado can be the brand of the Kaikado, not only just only the shop of the tea container. Yeah, and you do all these um, events and showcases to bring other craft people to the space so people can experience those products and it's less talking about craft and more about experiencing them you know and, and it could be anything and you also do something which i i haven't been able to join in person because of the physical distance but uh, you also have um the the craft people that work with you at kaikado showcase their own ideas and products uh, at least once a year uh, which is also a very interesting way of allowing new things or different approaches to to come into the world. Actually about, you know, before the COVID time, I was in uh, uh, London and with uh, children and we make this kind of plate together. Hmm. And uh, after COVID, I was in London, you know, about, uh, last June and uh, the, the children bring the plate back to me and I still have that. I think that kind of experience, you know, is important you know, for the for our future. If we, once we experience, we never forget. You know, something like what we learn by words, we always forget. Mm. But once we have the experience, we never forget. You know, in a cross world, my father never teach me. He just asked me to watch and learn. So we always pass our philosophy by uh, hand to hand, not by words, by experience. We pass the experience, uh, pass the uh, philosophy to the next generation. Mm. I think that takes a long time because watch and learn takes them a long time to learn how to make the tea container by you know teaching me how to make the tea container. But once I had the experience by myself, I never forget. I think that kind of experience is much, much important you know, than, you no. Know. Yeah, there was, there was that famous saying, I don't know if it was uh, Franklin or, or someone like that said is, is uh, tell me and I forget, teach me and I will remember, involve me and I learn. And there's something also interesting that uh, this passing on from hand to hand, it's even from a, a way to involve all your senses to create an understanding, which is not just intellectual, right? So we often spoke about this, that you would be in the other room hammering and your father or your grandfather would hear and said, oh, you're doing it wrong. So uh, <laughs> by, by paying attention in a deeper way that it's not just the mind, because you can look at this and say, oh, I get it. But then you start mm -hmm. to do it and it's not that easy. Uh, and learning requires your full body and mind to be working together. There's a couple more questions I wanted to, to touch on. So um, 
well, one here, I think we address it in a way, but asks which are the um, the red lines you wouldn't cross in your business? What kind of things you would never do? And I think you spoke about some of those, you know, making cheap objects just for speed and, and um, or not trying to make too many things uh, because you want to leave space for the business to, to grow and continue evolving. But is there any other thing that you would never consider doing that you think you would be sacrificing your ethics or, or your way of seeing business? I know when I coming back to this, you know, Kaikado business, my father told me what I should do is making tea container. You know, uh, so um, this point I never forget. All what I have to do is continue making tea container because people bring back 100 years ago tea container, fix again to use again. So people buy right now, they will bring back 100 years later. So we have to continue making tea container for next 100 years. So I think, you know, if we, you know, now, uh, just one moment. <clears throat> I, I work with the Danish design studio. Sometimes I make this kind of the water pitcher. But we don't want to be a you know, uh, tabletop maker. Mm. To continue making tea container, we are making this one. Mm. So this point, I think this is a red line for myself. To forget, if you, I for something, I forget about making the tea container, making something new and something different, it's, I think, the overall the red line. Mm. Yes, that's in mm. interesting. So that keeps your essence and grounded um, because sometimes, you know, there could be a season where a certain product becomes very popular and mm -hmm. you could decide to stop making the tea containers to just make what is more popular today. But these objects have had a continuity uh, mm -hmm. that it could be bigger or smaller, but it's a continuity that depends on this work that's all the line of, of different Kaikado heads have, have maintained. But as you told me, like a two, uh, don't know, once you buy this tea container, you can use for a long, long, long time. Mm. So this is not a good business to make the profit. Mm. But thinking about, only thinking about profit, you know, people always forget about to make this tea container. But to make this container is very unique. That's why we can exist right now. So, you know, uniqueness, you know, of myself is important. And even if, you know, we cannot make so much profit. Connected to the tea containers is a question actually coming from, from uh, Hayden and Tim at Postcard Teas that says, um, you have a pale brass material and lacquer urushi coated tin. Do you have any plans or experiments with other long lasting outer materials for future tea caddies as well as your recreate tea caddy project where you get different tins that had different purposes and you turn them into tea caddies. So material, I think it's about material experimentation. And, and as you said, your grandfather brought copper, initially it was tin, you also do brass. So what, what else is happening in the Kaikado labs? But now I am, uh, you know, uh, thinking about to make it in plastic. Wow, fantastic. <laughs> That's a forbidden <laughs> word. <laughs> tell us, tell I, us more about it. What is the thinking behind it? I don't know. Actually, you know, plastic, if you throw away, it's not good for the environment. Yeah. Like uh, if you continue using the plastic, that's also another way of uh, to keeping the environment better. So recycle plastic. Now people can make it very you know, details and very precise. So if we can make the, you know, plastic lid with this kind of the tea container, maybe the plastic lid goes down by itself, something like this kind of the air tightness. Also, um, I'm not sure 100% what it's going to be, 
but one of the, my, you know, future solution. And also now I work with a uh, uh, ceramic to make the tea container. Mm. And also sometimes I work with the, uh, uh, carbon fiber or some other you know, things. But, you know, people say plastic is no good. But I think, you know, um, think about the opposite way. It might have the value. Mm. Mm. If we make a lot of plastic things and throw away, it's not good. But if we make the plastic thing and we can continue using forever, also plastic has a value, I think. So that's why I try to make, I try to cooperate with a plastic company. And but I think I, the whole I, point, I, but I think the whole point of experimentation should also be trying to understand um, because the solutions often we say, oh, we need to stop doing something. And for many things, it's very difficult. You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, the, there's a global agreement that fossil fuels are not good, but we couldn't stop tomorrow using fossil fuels. The world would stop, at least the world how we know it. And I think that experimenting, one thing I was always very surprised of the various crafts people I've, I've, I've met in, in, not just in Kyoto, but are, uh, along Japan is a playful um, uh, approach to their work. I mean, before you mentioned uh, Nakagawa Shuji, uh, he is a woodworker. He comes from making this um, very traditional, you know, um, containers for rice or for miso and stuff. And he's one of the most playful people I know. He will look at a product as a material, the tools and, and um, create, explore, understand. And then, you know, there's some things he does more of and, and, and you know, it's, it's the business and, and, and the things he likes the most. But I always have found very interesting this playfulness aspect of, let's first consider things by making, not just mm -hmm. by saying, oh, I'm against this or against that. Yeah. I work with plastic. Mm. The red part is a plastic. So, you know, mm, some, you know, Something opposite side, I think, sometimes has a value. Like uh, now, you ha we have the chat GPT. Yeah, people can um, make the you know a lot of you know, bunsho bunsho. How can I say in bunsho in? Um, um, just not. Bunsho was uh, documents. Documents, yes. Forms, but yeah. For free, no? With yeah. the chat. Yeah. So thinking about that point, uh, what we cannot express by words is important. Mm. Chat GPT can make everything into the words yeah. for free. So something we cannot put into the world is very important from now on, I think. So I think opposite side has a value. Mm. So you know, that's why I always think about you know, both sides. But also mm. remembering the experience or, or why, because, for example, if you look at the haiku by Basho, uh, mm. they're very simple, right? So the, the uh, but when you read them, uh, there's a connection with what was going on. And maybe he's just saying that he's walking, the, the leaves are falling, the snow is coming, right? And um, it's not the words, it's, it's transmitting something bigger than the words, um, a sense of feeling that if you haven't lived, you wouldn't understand it. If you haven't ever felt the cold or seeing how the seasons change, you would never. And I think that's sometimes the risk we have with technology is that we just look at it as a function. Um, the reasons why we write, I, I write every day by hand is, is, is not just to communicate. It's part of a, a moment where I cannot do anything else. So it's about focus. It could be also about relaxing. It could also be about how this stimulates my senses, you know, uh, and, and often we, we forget what makes us human, that we have all these different dimensions. Um, output is not the only one. Um, I know we were running slightly over in time, so I just want to ask you a couple of, of quick things. First, there's a comment also on the chat uh, from Christine that says, interestingly, I got the family feeling from my first visit to the shop, thanks to at the atmosphere in the shop. From the entrance, I had the feeling that I was entering into someone's house, being able to see people working in the workshop. And over time, I realized that the team is very stable and connections get developed. 
uh, it's very difficult to get that from a website where you pick the product, get it delivered, but I atmospheres. Think, you know, in sometimes we go to different country, we can have smells and uh, noise and everything that makes us uh, uh, feeling and uh, that's help us to remember everything wrong. So, you know, people now in Japanese, for especially for younger people, they always look at in the uh, website and they were happy to, you know, inside Japan, not going out from, uh, from Japan. They already feel like they were in a foreign country. But I think, you know, if you go to a foreign country, you have a different feeling. I think that's also very important for the people. And also, uh, sorry, and uh, Gianfranco, I forget one thing to tell you about what is the point of the, to crossing the red line, red line mm. is, I think it's a feeling. Something go beyond the red line for yourself, you feel no good. Mm. I always feel no good. And then I coming back. This feeling is not made by only by myself. I grew up with my grandfather, grew up with my father, with my family, and everything in the daily life helped me to create this kind of feeling. You know, uh, no, kokochi yoi, good feeling mm. or not good feeling. Oh, I always decide what we should do, or we shouldn't do that. So I think, you know, mm, to go over the red line, naturally people feel uncomfortable. So if you feel uncomfortable, I think if please coming back. Yeah. Or reflect on why, because there could be also doing something new sometimes could be make you feel uneasy, not uncomfortable. So I think being in connection with oneself and what you represent is a very important thing. Mm -hmm. But talking of feeling, uh, um, this is a tea scoop you gave me the first time we met and you did it for me. You know, we're in a big trade show in Milan during the Salone. Um, we didn't know each other. Um, and you sat down, you know, uh, you had your tools and, and, and you wrote my, my name here in this object. And, you know, in, when, when you go to big events or big trade shows, there's a lot of cheap products being done and everything has been done before because it has to be very quick in transaction. You want more clients. You spend... I don't know, it was five minutes, eight minutes. I, I actually did a video of you making this. Um, and this was the first feeling I got of Kaikado. Before I even, I mean, your tea caddies were there, but before I ever used one, it was, oh, he's the head of the family. You know, we are in an event where there's potential business opportunities and other people and stuff. And he sat down on the floor and he spent five or seven minutes, whatever it was, to make a tea, uh, tea scoop for me that actually has aged very nicely. I mean, these two things used to be the same color. Um, uh, so my first thing was, wow, I mean, you don't need to do this. You know, you could have given me, I don't know, a business card and say, oh yeah, these are the products, here's a discount or something. So I've always found that the feeling side of things is very consistent in, in what you do as a company, in the spaces you build, in the relation with the people you work with and around you have. So. Um, as someone else was mentioning in the chat, I think that you've been very successful as, at transmitting that with, with your work. Cool. Um, I have uh, two very quick questions. One is someone is asking is if the book is going to be published in other parts of the world, because of course it's in Japanese and, and um, I cannot read it. My Japanese is very basic. So uh, I think there's an interest and maybe we could talk about this later of how could we make this happen. But do you have any plans for for this to be translated or published in other places? Uh, I really want to you know, publish in uh, English or some other uh, languages, but now I, I have no plans. We have no plans to make it okay. in a different way. We'll talk so, about it then offline and, and maybe we can come up with something. <laughs> um, please. The, the last thing, and, and uh, feel free to be brief, but one of the points you talk about in the book is um, ways to continue to work and live in a natural way without fatigue. And this is an English translation, an automatic one. So I don't know if these were the exact words, but of course, one of the things that's happening to so many people in my network, to myself, is fatigue, right? There's so much work. 
Um, we always feel that we're not doing enough and there's more to do, which leads some people to burn down, uh, burnout and, and tiredness. And you hear this all over the world. So I wonder um, what was this point in, in the book about working and continuity and, and, and fatigue? Um, so like, uh, you know, um, in, in this cafe, we, we sometimes we serve the coffee as well. Mm. But, you know, tea is for me. It's feel like you know crafts. I think the coffee is something like art. Oh wow, interesting. I feel like the you know, coffee. I always feel like you know, instant feeling about wake up and the prime. You no, know. but tea, we needed something. Uh, that I I have a feeling like a coffee is a strong beam. Mm. And the, the tea is like a very dim light. Mm. And the dim lights, we have to watch carefully to feel about what is it in it. And the strong beam, you know, even if we, we close my eyes, we can feel. Mm. So something, you know, tea and the crafts and uh, the life from now on, maybe I feel like, you know, uh, I try to watch and learn is important. Mm -hmm. You know, something uh, I have teach is too obvious. It's just only a shallow things. Mm -hmm. It's not, mm, it's not too important that uh, I think the deep point and, uh, and uh, here is much important to see this point, you know, we have to watch and learn something like my father did. If you know, my father teach me how to make the tea container. I only can learn how to make the tea container. My father asked me to watch and learn. Then I try to think about what is a kaikado. Then I can learn what is a kaikado because I step ahead. Mm. If my father teach me, I never step ahead. Like tea, we, I think we need something step into the tea world. And that kind of, you know, one step ahead is important. You know, something we uh, show in this, you know, smartphone and also computer, Mm, I think it's less important. Mm. Something we can get into it and then we can learn is much important. Something we teach. Yes. It's not too, it's not important. Yeah. So I think it connects back to the experience and living things and, and also forming your own understanding. Because if I just teach you how to do this, you'll only be able to do this. If I teach you what's behind it, the techniques, the appreciation, then you can translate that into different fields, right? Which again, is what I'm interested of your book is, I'm not a tea caddy crafts person, um, and I would never become one, I think. <laughs> I haven't started even <laughs> so. Uh, but the same principles of experience and connection and learning and making um, are, translatable to other fields, which I think that's where the value is. Um, and I think, you know, if, if uh, the people watching or that will watch this video later are either based in London or visit London or visit Kyoto or Vancouver, um, I encourage them to go and, and check out the, the, the tea caddies, you know, in London is at Postcard Teas in, what's the name of the, of the place in Vancouver? Uh, inform interiors. Inform interiors, or of course, if you visit the the, the Kaikado cafe or shop, um, because there's so much things we could talk about, but the reality then is in the in the life and the experience and carrying it with you and in, in feeling it with not just your mind but your whole body. And I think that's something that I think you and and, and those before you in Kaikado have done very very well. Um, someone was mentioning uh, in the chat, Joe Lu, um, that in Switzerland, 
um, that they were very moved with the installation you did of Kaikata Tikaris in space with no gravity. And they say that if they ever meet an alien, they will bring a Kaikata Tikari as a present. So who knows, <laughs> you know? Um, um, Taka, it's always a, um, a precious opportunity to have a chance to, to talk with you. And I'm very happy that so many people joined today uh, because I think that the things you share, the things you do, the things you do with your company um, have, um, have a, there's a need for them. And, and um, so I'm always very grateful of the time you dedicate to this. Uh, I will be sharing and publishing the video. Um, we'll chat separately to see what we can do to make this more available uh, in other places around the world. But in essence, uh, thank you. Thank you for making time on a Friday evening in Kyoto. Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry about you know to sharing my feeling in English is very difficult. So sorry. Oh no, but uh, I mean not only your English is amazing, but you're also crossing the the bridges that sometimes we cannot because of the uh, lack of access to Japanese culture. So this was a, a, a great opportunity. Thank you very much for for the time and, and the effort. And hope to see you soon in person. Thank you. And I hope to be back in Europe soon again. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for, for joining. Cheers. Thank you.